Social is the latest in a series of different social media sites that purport to be willing to fight for your free speech online. Truth Social is the, the chumped-backed one, and the CEO is Devin Nunes, who you may remember as a Republican congressman. And the site isn't doing well. The media is mocking it already for that very reason. There's a waiting list for registration for some reason. Despite it being available to the public, everyone has to be approved. I don't know why. Trump already hasn't posted on it for several weeks. And in many ways, it seems like another parlor. Or is that parlay? Or, or is it getter? Because to be honest, they're all just kind of merging into one at this point for me. Because when you look, there's a series of different social media sites that all say that they're going to they're gonna fight for your free speech. And then it comes down to it and they don't. They institute policies that don't allow, quite simply, for free speech. They don't allow you to give your opinion freely. And so what's the point in them existing at all? And I say that quite literally because if I want to use a social media site that restricts my ability to give my honest opinion, I'll use Twitter. It's bigger, got a bigger audience. Why on earth would I want to use some, something with a smaller audience that also restricts my speech? And so you see, you see Parler and you see Getter, now you see Truth Social, which I'll, I'll get to more in a second. There's also MeWe and PolitiChatter, some of these you're probably not familiar with. Good for you, I've used them all. Um, but this latest one, the, the Trump-backed Twitter alternative Truth Social, slapped a sensitive material warning on a post from Stu Peters. But also, if you look at the terms of service, users are prohibited from posting anything false, indecent, misleading, profane, obscene, filthy, or otherwise objectionable. That's quite a list. Some of that makes sense. How about misleading, though? That's, that's a pretty subjective term. I mean, anything could be seen as misleading. I mean, that's the sort of nature of news as it changes, in fact. So you could argue that all news, when reported upon, is wholly misleading and slanted in one way or another. It's certainly not the case with all commentary. There are people who are simply wrong accidentally. That happens. But do you really want the social media side itself determining what's misleading and what's not? I don't. That sounds like the sort of thing that Twitter does when it's when it fact checks, I don't want that from a social media site. I'm an adult. I'm capable of figuring out what's misleading and what's not and investigating a story if it's important to me. I don't need them to do that for me. I don't consider that a service. And I don't want them banning people who, who say things that they determine are misleading. That's not a free speech site. And then how about the other one? Otherwise objectionable. Well, that's about as vague as it can get. I'll tell you, just about all of my opinions are objectionable to someone. That's the way opinions are. If you're saying something of value, someone's going to be offended. Someone's going to find it objectionable. Here are some things that I actually believe that are objectionable to someone, to some people, to, to a lot of people. Gay marriage is an abomination. Homosexuality often stems from childhood trauma and is reversible in at least some cases. Abortion is evil. We shouldn't give foreign aid when we're in debt to the next generation, that is, our next generation here at home. Multiculturalism is not just a catastrophe in practice, it's wrong in theory because some cultures are better than others, and our culture, as it was Christendom, was better than the others, and we should get back to that and not keep importing the third world. Offended? Somebody is. Somebody found that list really objectionable. I don't care, I wasn't asking, and I would expect to be able to say such things on a free speech site. I know that on Gab, I would be able to, and as far as I know, it's the only social media site that allows me to give my opinions freely without worrying about it. Truth Social's terms of service forces users to agree not to disparage, tarnish, or otherwise harm, in our opinion, us and or our site. So in other words, you can't criticize Truth Social. So I guess I better not sign up for that account after all because I'm currently recording this video and it seems like a bad first post. No, seriously, that's, that's really in their terms of service. We can't criticize them. And that includes them as individuals, apparently, like Devin Nunes. You can't criticize him on that site. And look, I get why you wouldn't want someone to come to your site and talk crap about you. Uh, I wouldn't want someone to come to my site and leave a comment about me that was hostile. But the thing is that when you're setting up a social media site and your entire shtick of the whole thing is this, is this allows for free speech and free political commentary, then you can't then go and decide to be the arbiter of which speech you allow and prevent any critique even of you. That doesn't work. And by the way, I'm not talking in hypotheticals here. 
They banned a user who tried to create an account called Devin Nunez's Cow. It's a reference to a Twitter parody account called Devin Cow, which purported to be run by a cow owned by Devin Nunez. It's just like this internet joke thing. But Nunez filed a defamation lawsuit against the owner of that Twitter account, Devin Cow, back in March 2019. And a judge dismissed that case because you're not immune from parody or mockery on account of you being a public figure. In fact, the opposite of the case is the case. If you're a public figure, you actually have less protection than a regular private citizen would have. But this all just stands to say that Truth Social isn't what it proclaims to be. And that's already evident, you know, and so it's like, Truth Social promises to stand up to the tyranny of big tech, and that's a phrase that they use. But how confident are you that they would be any better if they were given the same degree of power? Because what I see is Truth Social is still a fairly small company in the realm of social media companies, and already they have these policies that show, in my opinion, a lack of backbone, a lack of principles. And in my opinion, I'd say that what they, what they promote as their ethos does not match what they actually do in practice, or even match their terms of service. So how confident are you that if they had the same power and reach as something like Twitter, that they wouldn't be every bit as aggressive in, in dealing with and uh, speech that they didn't like, that they found otherwise objectionable? I mean, do you think they'd be worse or better than Twitter? I don't know. But I'm not confident that they'd be better. Are you?